wow, wow. How's everybody doing? You guys good? Yeah. It's good to be here, man. It's good to be out the house, man. I was at home during lockdown with my family. I, I think I realized you need distance to love your family. I think that's very important. You need to be, you need to be away from them. Uh, I was with my mom. My mom, she loves me too much. That's my problem. Uh, she's too supportive of my career. Like, cause my mom, like, she wants to support my comedy career, but she doesn't know anything about comedy. And I can tell from like the type of support she gives me. Do you know what I mean? Like, like my mom will say things to me like, ah, Michael, you know, if you keep working hard, you could be the next Bill Cosby. And I'd be like, mom, don't do that one. That's it, don't, don't do it, don't do it. I don't think she knows. Um, all she does know, and we need to have a conversation. Either way, it's not on. It's not on. Obviously, I love my mom. You know, we just have fights sometimes, you know? Have you ever had that thing with someone you love, right? Where you want something bad to happen to you to make them feel bad about what they did to you. Like it's a weird psychological thing. Like I call it reverse revenge, you know? I'll, gi I'll give you an example so I can explain. Like, for example, one time my mom, she sent me out to go get tea bags like 10 p.m. at night, okay? And I didn't want to go because it was like, mom, it's cold, it's dark, but she made me go. And I'm not proud of this, right? But when I was on my way, that's the only time in my life that I've ever wanted to get stabbed. Like, you know what I mean? It's like nothing, nothing fatal, obviously, nothing fatal, just a flesh wound, you know, like, like enough to still get the tea bags, of course, you know, but I can drop it on the table afterwards, like, enjoy your blood tea, your monster, you know, some shit like that, that's what I want. That's all I want. Not, not even get stabbed, like maybe if I got hit by a car, that'd be good too, that'd be nice. Because if I get hit by a car, then maybe I'll get like a permanent limp and I can use that for life, that'd be good. <laughs> Just like any time in the future, she goes take a sip of tea, I walk past that and nowhere like, I hope it was worth it. Do you know what I mean? Something like that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's how deeply I thought about it, man. Nah, man, there's always, there's always, I live in Dagnum. Johnny was saying, I live in Dagnum. There's always some like crime going on in Dagnum and sometimes it gets on my nerves. Like, for example, I remember a few years back, right? I was reading in my local paper and it was talking about black on black crime in Dagnum, you know? It was saying black on black crime is rising and it's up to the black community to solve it. And I was annoyed when I read that, because I was like, you know what? I don't really want to solve black on black crime, you know? Like, I'm busy, I've got stuff to do already, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why have I got to solve crime? I'm not Batman, I didn't sign up for this. I'm, I'm a taxpayer sometimes, and I don't have to do this, you know? <laughs> no, because for me, for me, crime is just crime. It don't matter who's doing it, it's just mad that's happened, you know what I mean? Like, let me give you an example. Let's imagine this late at night, and I'm at the cash machine, I'm just trying to get some money out, you know? I'm trying to take out a 10, the machine says there's no tens left, so I'm like, cool, I take out a 20. The machine gives me two tens, because the machine's an arsehole. You know, we've all been there, we've had a situation. <laughs> I'm just painting the picture, right? And I get my money, and I'm about to leave, okay? But then suddenly, I feel like a knife in my back, and the guy's like, yo, give me your money, okay? As you can imagine, in that situation, I'm panicking. All I can think is, oh shit, I knew I shouldn't have gone out to get these tea bags. You know what I mean? I knew this was gonna happen, I won't prepare for this, actually, okay? But let's say I get that money and I turn around to see who's robbing me and I see it's a white guy. I don't think after all that, I'm gonna be like, oh, phew, you scared me for a minute. Oh my goodness, oh my, oh my goodness, oh my. Oh, I was worried about the statistics for a minute right there. I thought I was in trouble. Oh my gosh. Then I just give him the money and ruffle his hair like, ah, get out of here, man. These white boys be crazy. When would they learn? When would they learn these? These right rascals, you know. Now, I make mistakes myself. I judge people for, for racial reasons based on the wrong thing. For example, I'll give you an example. I remember when me and my family, when we first moved to Dagnum, we moved next door to our neighbor's house. And we saw they had this massive England flag hanging outside their house, okay? And when we saw that, as a black family, we were a little bit worried, you know? Because of the connotation sometimes you get with the England flag and minorities, okay? But we misjudged them. They turned out to be really good people. But those first few days, they were kind of tense, as you can imagine. Because we had to play that famous minority guessing game, you know? Are they racist? Or do they just like football? Do you know what I mean? Like, we didn't know what side they were on. <laughs> We didn't know whether it was go home or it's coming home. Like, we didn't know what side of that was. We didn't know. We didn't know. Sometimes it's both. Racists are great multitaskers, you know, sometimes. You know? <laughs> what else can I tell you about myself? I'm a big fan of music, man. I love hip hop. That's my favorite genre. My favorite part of hip hop is when you can tell when a rapper's lying in their songs, you know? 
It don't even have to be the big lie. Like, I hate when rappers are talking about how in their school days, their teachers never believed in them, and they'll say something like, yeah, my teacher said I was never going to make it. And I was like, no, she didn't. Teachers don't talk like that, first of all. <laughs> and secondly, even if she did say that, the second line in your song, you're saying, yeah, my teacher said I was never going to make it. I was selling drugs and shooting people. Well, then that's why she said that then. That's, that's, <laughs> perfectly, that's perfectly reasonable for a teacher to say that if you're selling drugs and shooting people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's why, like, if you're shooting people and your teacher's like, I see potential in you, that's a bad teacher. <laughs> that's a bad teacher. <laughs> school, is, school is interesting with all this, like, racial stuff going on right now. I had someone I went to school with 10 years ago. I hadn't spoken to them in 10 years, right? They sent me a message on Facebook apologizing for calling me a racial slur in a maths class all those years back. They were like, Michael, I was bad back then. I was really ignorant back then. I just want to apologize for what I said to you in that maths class. I'm a better person. And I saw that message and I reflected on it. And I replied, hey man, it's really good to see that you're not racist anymore. Um, but we weren't in the same maths class. You have the wrong black guy, actually. It wasn't me, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't me. Um, it's funny because it was me, I just wanted to fuck with him. That was the best part about the whole thing. That's the best part about the message, you know? Nah, it's good, man. Nah, man, it's a big, it's a big racial reckoning going on. I'm trying to learn myself. I'm, I'm trying to get woke. Um, I thought I was woke, but then I realized I'm just black. Like, there's a difference. I'm not actually, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not actually doing anything. I need to do more. I'm trying to be more about the women's rights. I'm trying to support that, I'm trying to be a good guy. Because I hear a lot of women saying things like, men are trash. I never hear, but like, are they recyclable? No one ever asked those important questions, you know? There's <laughs> always toxic masculinity. Can we make it carbon neutral? Those are the key questions <laughs> that we need to be asking. <laughs> I'm trying to be less creepy. I was creepy one time to a woman, but I can explain it, I can. Um, so I knew this woman from work and I invited her out on a date. She said, yeah, okay, we're getting closer to the date. I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but what we're gonna talk about on the date. So I was like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go on her Facebook page and just scroll for a little bit, see the kind of thing she's interested in. Maybe I can bring it up on the date. But here's the part where it gets creepy. I end up scrolling back a bit too much. and then scrolling back about 10 years deep, but that's creepy, it's too much. <laughs> but fast forward to the date now, everything's going fine, we're having a great time, conversation is flowing, but I get tripped up because I know too much about this girl Jessica. That's her name, I know too much about her. Because at one point, she reaches over with her fork to eat some of my dessert. But I don't think that she knew that my dessert had peanuts in it, but I knew that from a Facebook profile from seven years back. That's how I knew that. And in that moment when she's putting the fork to her mouth, I realized I have a dilemma, do you know what I mean? Because like the good guy inside of me wants to slap that fork out of her hand and be like, Jessica, don't eat that, you're allergic. And I, and I want to do that, because I'm a good guy. But the creepy guy inside of me, he's a lot smarter. He's like, Michael, you know, if you do that right, she's going to want to know eventually how you knew that about her. Then she's going to find out you're a creep, do you know what I mean? Like a creep that saves lives, but a creep all the same, do you know? <laughs> it was a tricky situation. I didn't have a lot of time to think. Um, long story short, rest in peace, Jessica. You know what I mean? You're beautiful, so I did what I had to do. Um, you guys have been wonderful. My name's been Michael Lodawani, man. We told you this, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.